And so many times we think other people were born this, they were born naturally gifted, they were born great, they were born to be a leader, and you feel like you're not. But that is so not true, sister. That is so no, not true. You develop the skills and the knowledge and the experience that you need over time as you walk it out. So don't for a minute be held back by that lie that you don't have enough, you aren't enough. And I could go all day long and tell you all of the gold that's inside of you and I could encourage you up and down to just go for it and do it. But it's gonna take you taking that act of faith and believing in you and believing what God says about you to actually see yourself stepping into your influence and your impact. Hello, ambitious woman of faith. We are gonna have a conversation today about influence and impact. You know that there's something that you are meant to do. You have a destiny, you have a purpose, you have talents and abilities and skills, and you wanna know, how can I more fully step into the influence that I have? And how can I make an impact in my family, in my community, in the space that I work? And so that's what this conversation is gonna be all about. So one of the first questions to go deep on here on your influence and impact is why. Why do you wanna have impact? Why do you wanna have influence? I know for myself, and I'm sure it's the same for you, you wanna do good in the world. You wanna leave an impact and a legacy and an inheritance for your children. You wanna help those in need. You want to bring purpose out of your pain and the things that you've walked through. You wanna reach behind you and grab somebody else's hand and bring them forward with you as you're finding breakthrough in your life and you're walking out your purpose. So the why of it matters. It matters because it's gonna impact how you show up in the world and the posture of your heart while you are pursuing your impact and your influence. I know sometimes these words can be conflated with self-absorption or selfishness, but influence and impact doesn't have to mean any of that. Only you and God know the posture of your heart. And so I want you to put your blinders up from the other people in your life who you know may negatively speak into this pursual of influence and impact. Oftentimes we experience resistance when we are pursuing our influence and our impact. And I talked about resist resistance in a previous episode, but we also experience resistance when it comes to other people as we're walking out our purpose. You might experience other people who speak negatively over what you're doing. So I want you to put those blinders on as we have this conversation and really focus in. So first things first, I want you to start even recognizing that you have influence and impact because you do. You can walk into a room and shift the energy just by your demeanor and your attitude. You have influence and impact in everything from your own family to the workplace, to your church, your community, the things that you're involved in. So one of the first places that you start recognizing that you have influence and impact is your own family. I want you to think about it. If you show up in your family and you have a bad attitude or a critical spirit, or you've just taken the stress of the day and work home, your family feels that. If you're always pointing out the things that your kids are doing wrong without three times over recognizing the things that they're doing right, that leaves an impact. Children model what they see. And if they see you showing up in that way, they learn to show up in that way when they look at other people they start recognizing the critical things instead of the gifts or the gold that are in other people. And I don't say this from a place of, I walk this out perfectly every day. So in your home, the place where you have the most impact and influence, I wanna encourage you to start there, show up there. There's a phrase by John Acuff I shared this recently on my own social media that said, give your kids the best of you, not the rest of you. So I want you to think about that. That really hit home for me when I heard this phrase and I loved it. It was such an encouragement to me that, no, I wanna give my family the best of me, not the rest of me, not the tired me that shows up at the end of the day. Although that's just a natural outflow of, of a day you feel tired, but how can I still show up in my family with impact and influence? and you're not always gonna get it right, but I'm not asking you to always get it right. I'm just asking you to be intentional in your home. The one place where you wanna be successful that matters more than the career success, the, the community success, the outward success that everybody sees, more than all of that success, you wanna give the best of you to the people that you love and the family that you're creating. I know for many parents right now, electronics is a huge thing. Screen time is a huge thing. It's a battle as parents we all face, having that balance in our home of screen time versus in-person time. So if you're always saying to your children, you know, I want you to get off your computer, I want you to get off your phone, I would encourage you to find fun alternatives. Rather than just saying, I want less screen time, replace that with you actually in the moment with them playing the board games, going outside with them. 
And I realize this isn't always easy because we're busy. We've got lots of things to do. So I'm not saying that it has to take up the bulk of your evening, but where you can pour in to these places you're asking them to cut is a time where you can show up and impact and influence in their lives. Speaking life over your spouse, calling that which is not as though it were. It does make an impact when you show up in your own home the way God has designed you to be with your giftings. I know for me, I tend to be a more driven, ambitious person. And so sometimes I just have to get really quirky with my kids and make them laugh. And I'll do some like crazy, silly, stupid dance, or I'll say some phrase that they typically say, but I'll say it in a really cringy mom way just to make them laugh. And they'll be like, mom, don't say that. No, no, don't. But it lightens the mood and it creates a connection. And it gives them the memory of, hey, remember when mom did this? Remember when she was breaking out of her shell and did this crazy, stupid dance that just totally made me cringe? Which if you're listening back to this, like maybe 10 years down the road, maybe you're saying like, what does cringe mean? I don't know. It's like a thing right now. And I think it has been for a while. But anyway, the second thing I want to say is to show up as God has made you to show up in the world, how he has uniquely designed you. And sometimes we feel like, we can't do that because we feel like either it won't be accepted or, or it will be misunderstood. Or maybe we've shown up in life in one particular demeanor or way. And as we've evolved and changed over time, we realize that's not really who I am. I've kind of evolved and I'm here now. And I'll give you kind of a practical example of what I mean by that. When I was younger, I was really quiet, really shy, unsure of myself. I was not the person that walked into a room and was just loud and let my voice be heard. But over time, I realized I'm not an introvert. I'm not quiet. I'm not shy. And at the same time, I'm not the most loud and bubbly either, but I do have something to say. And I do want to use my voice, which is me right here on this podcast and on YouTube and the other places that I try to show up. And over time, I've realized I'm actually an extrovert. Like I love connecting and talking with people that gives me energy. It's why I'm so excited to one day build a team where it's not just me talking over this podcast. I'll get to be involved in conversations and regular interactions with my team as we're building and growing the business ideas that I have beyond called forth podcast. So I want to encourage you not to be afraid to recognize that you've grown and changed over time and not to be intimidated to show up as the new you. And maybe it's not necessarily the new you, but the matured you, the grown you, the evolved you the next layer, the next level you. Next, I want you to evaluate where you want to use your voice. Where do you wanna show up with impact and influence? Is there a new space that you wanna get involved in, a new conversation that you wanna be a part of? Evaluate that, think about that, and then begin to take steps towards doing that. I know recently, it was actually during the pandemic in 2020, 2021, the school that my children go to started to make some decisions that myself and a lot of other parents didn't agree with. And we chose to get into the conversation with our school board and let our thoughts and opinions be known about these decisions that were being made that were affecting our children. So that was a conversation. I decided I wanted to use my voice. I wanted to use my impact and my influence for the sake of my children and the de these decisions that were being made that impacted them. So in your own life, I want you to think about, is there a particular space or a particular conversation that you want to bring your voice to and lend your thoughts, your ideas, your influence, and your impact to? And then as hard as it might sometimes feel to step into a space you've never occupied before, I want you to remember that your voice is needed. If you feel this stirring on your heart to positively influence and impact a particular space and area, know that you're not just feeling that for no reason. There are lots of things to get involved in. There's a million things that we could do with our day, but if there's something that's standing out to you and it's important enough to you to raise your voice and be a part of the conversation, then I don't think it's something you should ignore. I think it's something that you need to lean into. And while you take the steps to do that, you are going to start experiencing some comparison and imposter syndrome, which is what I, which is the conversation I want to go into right now. On several different ep episodes, I've talked about comparison as it relates to different things. So I want to bring in this conversation of comparison and imposter syndrome as it relates to you stepping in and using your voice in new spaces or pioneering new spaces. I'm sure you can think of lots of people right now who you believe have influence and impact. And if you compare yourself against those people, you're gonna feel like you maybe come up short. Or maybe you look at other people who have influence and impact and you're like, if they could have influ influence and impact, why am I struggling with influence and impact? But this is where I wanna bring in 
what I had said a little bit earlier is you put your blinders on and you move forward in your lane because it's easy to feel like the market's saturated and the world is saturated with people who have influence and impact. But I want you to know there are people that you, you are meant to influence and impact. You're going to say things in a certain way that is going to reach their heart. And that's going to cause awakening and revelation because of what you share, what you've been through, how you share it. The other thing I want to say about comparison is that just because the spotlight is on someone else doesn't mean there's not enough of a spotlight left for you too. I know sometimes when we get into comparison, it can feel like there's not enough room for me on the stage of life, the platform of life, because it's so filled with so many other people who are more qualified than I am, better resourced, better educated, more experienced, more refined, more polished, whatever. But in the stage of life, there is room for you. And there is a spot that is uniquely carved out for you before you even step there. And I believe that's because God has a destiny and a plan and a purpose for your life and you were made on purpose for a purpose. So there's already a space that you are meant to fill and you might not see the footprint just yet. You might not see the space just yet, but as you start to use your influence and your impact and step into that, you're going to see the dust blow away and the spot revealed where you are meant to stand and serve. But you might not see that before you take those steps of action. And you might not see it for a while, even as you're taping, taking those steps of action, but you will eventually come to the place where you have clarity around where you're really meant to use your influence and impact. And imposter syndrome is a very real thing. I don't care if you are at the lowest level or the highest level in your work, in your business, in your life, we all struggle with imposter syndrome. Even CEOs of companies experience imposter syndrome. They could be in a room full of other CEOs and feel like, well, I'm the one that knows the least, or I have the least amount of experience, or even the one that has the most experience might feel like I don't really deserve to be here. It's just luck that I got here. So don't believe the lie that you have to be at the highest level in order to no longer feel imposter syndrome, because that's just not the case. So regardless of whether you feel like you deserve to be in the position that you're in, or you have what it takes to get where you want to go, I want you to remember that the beautiful thing about stepping out into your influence and impact is that you develop as you go, you grow as you go. You develop what you need for those roles as you step towards them and in them. Meaning you might not have everything it takes right now to be successful in that future thing that you wanna do, but that doesn't mean you can't start working towards it and stepping into it right now because you're gonna learn what you need to learn along the way. And so many times we think other people were born this, they were born naturally gifted, they were born great, they were born to be a leader and you feel like you're not, but that is so not true, sister. That is so no, not true. You develop the skills and the knowledge and the experience that you need over time as you walk it out. So don't for a minute be held back by that lie that you don't have enough, you aren't enough. And I could go all day long and tell you all of the gold that's inside of you and I could encourage you up and down to just go for it and do it but it's gonna take you taking that act of faith and believing in you and believing what God says about you to actually see yourself stepping into your influence and your impact. And I believe that the more you do it, the better you become at recognizing in life we fail forward. We don't walk it out perfectly and that we don't need to be perfect in order to be successful. And the last thing I wanna say, when you step into your influence and impact, you encourage and empower and equip other people to do the same. I know there's been different times where I've seen good friends start to step out in their destiny and their purpose and the things that God is stirring on their heart. And as they do that, I get encouraged to do the same thing. I get inspired to do the same thing. So think about the people behind you. As you start to step out into your influence and impact, think about the people that you're going to inspire and encourage and help to break free from imposter syndrome when they watch you walk out the things that God is stirring on your heart. And you don't have to do it perfectly to inspire and empower and encourage. I've heard this phrase oftentimes, it's the broken pieces in our lives and the mistakes that we make and the imperfect way we walk it out that bring that connection for people to feel like, if she can do it, I can do it. You're gonna have your haters and the people that feel like you shouldn't be in the position that you're in because you're not qualified enough or skilled enough, but whatever. Those people are not your audience that you need to be paying attention to. You are inspiring and encouraging and empowering and equipping other people when you are stepping into your impact and your influence. So let this message right now be your permission to start stepping out and going for it. I look forward to more of these conversations with you because you are an ambitious woman of faith and you have impact and influence. 
that's all we've got for this episode of the Called Forth podcast. One thing that would really help both us and other new potential listeners is for you to rate this show and leave a comment in iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you tune in to listen. Also make sure to link up with us at www.dontown.com. That's D-A-W-N-T-O-W-N-E.com. And on social media. And please just share. Share this podcast with anyone who you think might enjoy it. Until next time, remember, you have been called forth.